it. Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the uh, first uh, coaches meeting of 2023. And uh, not uh, too many issues to or items to talk about, but let me go through some administrative uh, items on my list. Um, again, my name is Craig Peterman, co-PDP for the FLL program. Um, so the one item uh, are hotels. Um, I have not been notified that we've reached capacity, but if anybody has any trouble making a reservation at one of those two uh, locations, that's the Fairfield and the Hampton Inn on the east side of Madison, let me know. They will make more rooms available to us um, uh, if we need them. And if they're available, of course. Um, let's see. What else? Oh, I guess there's a, uh, a door jamboree, some sort of thing going on. So uh, check the Slack channel for those of you that's staying overnight. Um, I'm, I'm not sure I really understand what that's all about, but it sounds like a fun activity uh, for the evening before. We are putting together, hopefully, a uh, rather comprehensive program for the championship. And uh, with the summary of all the regional tournaments, sexual tournaments, all the winners, so on and so forth, uh, we did put in the last email newsletter. We're also going to have a page or possibly two, depending if there's interest, of anybody who wants to wish their team well or buy a, a certain amount of space to, to post a message. So it, it is a fundraiser for our organization. Uh, but it's 25 bucks to put something in there, 100 words, 100 characters, excuse me. Um, and then there's a $50 uh, dollars for, I believe, 300 characters. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Either way, that will also be in the uh, coming newsletter this week. Um, other than that, I don't really have anything administratively. We're still good to go at Madison College. Doors will likely open around 7.30. And uh, hopefully we'll be out of there by 5 p.m. Jay, any anything from your perspective? Oh, we have nothing, uh, nothing new as far as game rules. Obviously, um, I did ask for questions for from teams that may not be able to make it tonight um, to see if we could read them out for these guys and maybe get answers. Um, so Kathy is asking. Uh, do we know about advancement opportunities for state other than worlds? Uh, her kids have been asking. I don't know if you have information yet. If it's something you want to release yet, that's up to you guys. Okay. Well, at the moment, I can say we have an invitation to the Razorback in Arkansas. And I believe we have an invitation to, um, I forgot the name of it, but it's out in California. Oh, uh, the, those of you the Legoland one? You know what? I don't know. I, I haven't had a chance to I gotcha. dig through that email and, and, and link. So okay. um, it said California. So <laughs> awesome. Uh, let's start with that one. Um, there is a, a spreadsheet at first that is supposed to give us all the information. But for whatever reason, I have not been able to access that in the in the last week. So I will have more information about other opportunities, hopefully by next Monday. The one in California isn't the GIA, correct? There's a, there's a note that came out that GIA was suspended or something like that. So is that just not a thing this year? That's a Global Innovation Award. Yeah, I saw something about that being um, not the same as it has been. I think the one in um, California is the Legoland. So, I mean, in addition to knowing what the opportunities are, we have to know what our process is for which teams get invited. And if a team chooses not to go, who can take their place? Um, so we've got some details to work out before, you know, publishing the whole process. Yeah, Legoland Invitational, the one that they, they have um, in California. I don't see any dates or anything yet. That's one that they had done for a while. I think it got kind of COVID postponed a little bit, but it looks like it's back now. And that's not a virtual event like it was last year. Say that again. That's not that's not a virtual event like it was last year, was it? I don't know if we know that information yet. 
Okay. I mean, I, as far as I know, there are no virtual. Yeah. But so part of the problem with that is we won't know that until we get the information because these are not um, first um, official events. So they don't even have to go by you know, first standards. Um, they're just invitationals. I'm sure we'll get information to you guys as soon as we can, but we don't have that. And hopefully there'll be some more um, opportunities come up. Um, Jen, did you want to ask your other question um, that you have? I expected this question. I'm sure there is no answer for this, yet, but. <laughs> yeah, so I um, just wanted to know if you had an idea of what the, the schedule would look like, if it looked similar to what we've experienced before. Um, you had said doors open at 7.30. I presume the schedule for a 24, is it 24 teams that are in the event? That is correct. Um, then I, is there a dedicated lunch hour for that? Or is it, um, is is the event condensed? Just trying to figure out what expectations to set with my team. Uh, Jen, which sectional were you at? I'm a Guanago. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> the, uh, the uh, sectional at Waukesha was 24 teams and it will follow essentially that same schedule, maybe a tweak okay. here and there. There was, uh, I believe there was a dedicated hour for lunch, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but then everybody was done by, uh, what was it, done by like 2.45 yeah. was the last field match. Yeah, so, so it, our... It's going to be our standard. Um, there were only a couple that did what um, people have been calling the traditional schedule. Um, Franklin, uh, yeah, Franklin did the traditional old style, and I think Appleton did. Um, but the tournaments, the championship tournament is going to be just like the sectionals. So there'll be the whole day event. You know, they'll be judging and robot games throughout the day with the lunch break excluded. Okay, great. The then, overwhelming number of tournaments did the all day yeah. schedule. So we just wanted to keep it as consistent as possible. And both sectionals were all day judging and field. And then um, standard, like last year at the Madison College, where we each get like a standard size card table to set up our stuff at. Uh, in that uh, carpeted yep, area? Uh, actually, it will be either they got new tables or something, but it's it's larger than a cart table. Oh, we'll, we'll check with and Max. And more yeah. secure. We'll check with Max so. and see if he can get us the uh, the measurements for you guys. Okay, perfect. Just so that we know um, spacing and, and stuff. I actually should have foresaw that one coming. That was on my list of questions I knew was going to be asked. So we'll get to, <laughs> we'll get Max to get us a measurement so you guys will know how much stuff you can bring and put out. Yeah, the, the tables are bigger than your standard cart table, so I, I think that's a step up from what it might have been last year. But it, it's still a single table, and we want to give every team space, of course. And then Jay, I did have some robot questions. Oh yeah, go ahead. When you guys are done with the other questions. No, open mic, go ahead, Jen. Um, I have a question about this. I, I just wanna confirm my understanding of the scoring conditions for both the water molecule one and the, um, and the, the final one where you gotta park the truck over the, the okay. thing. Um, so similar to the dance, routine from two years ago, my understanding is that the some part of the body of the truck needs to be over that oval by the released car. Is that accurate? It does, uh, the whole thing doesn't have to cover it, just a part of it? Is how I understand the rules? Yeah, and um, it's even better than that. It's actually any part of the truck at all. Okay. It doesn't have to be the body or the cab or um, they're even showing on the uh, in the rule book, just that little uh, the little lugs off the back. Okay. That's even counting. So yeah. Okay. 
And then on the water molecule one, can you just, I know I had already sent you a picture on this one. Could mm -hmm. you just go through the scoring criteria for that one real yep. quick? Let me just scroll down to it. So um, actually we need to pull the update for this one because there was an update. So give me a second here. slow my computer wants to be now. Almost there. Okay, so I'm um, just looking through the updates first. Uh, this is just a field setup update and field setup update. Um, ch -ch -ch -ch. Okay, so the big deal with the water reservoir is that the um, the loops can extend out of out of the reservoir when you have them in. They can extend out the loops themselves. They don't have to be completely in, and um, the scoring condition uh, is by the hooks. It's not by the unit on the hooks. So if you have something on one hook, if you have two on one hook, it only scores once. I assume that's what you're specifically asking. No, I have, I, it's, it's, it's a bit more nuanced than that. Oh, okay, go ahead. Um, maybe not. Uh, you might've just answered the question too. So what happens if there are three on a hook? Okay, but uh, the other two are actually over the pool. I'm not clear on if the water molecule has to touch the mat. Uh, it does have to touch the mat. So if a okay. loop water unit is completely in the water in the reservoir touching the mat, that's five points. So obviously they can't okay. be on a hook and touching. Okay. Uh, if you have if you have say three units on a hook, it only counts as one on a hook because there's it's counted by Books, not water unit. Okay, so that, that answered my question. Yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't quite clear on if uh, sure. just being over it was sufficient. So, oh, got gotcha. you. Very good. Yeah, and that actually, I can see that. I can see where it was read that way. Um, that was actually in a rule update. They, they said specifically two loop water units on the same hook will only score for one. Okay, I just wasn't sure if it could score for the other condition, and the answer is no. I don't so, think they can oh. reach. Oh, you meant, okay, I see what you mean. You meant if it if it had to touch the mat or not. I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Okay, very good. Thank you. We keep working. I got you. And I'll, I'll just clarify for um, people that might be watching YouTube and that might have got a little bit convoluted. So um, the, the reason it can't score for both is because it can't physically reach the mat and be on the hook at the same time. So that's what we're kind of clarifying. And I guess we can just throw on there too that it can't be touching team equipment. Do you have other questions there or was that the, can't let me off that easy, Jen. But my understanding is that the truck one can touch team equipment when it goes over that circle. It doesn't have to be freestanding. Is that accurate? Uh, there is nothing that says it cannot touch team equipment. So therefore it can. And as I end, okay, I'll ask my other one via text. Okay. Ooh, top secret stuff. <laughs> of course. I feel like other team gets to be top secret. Why not me no, too? No, no. Okay, uh, that's it for me though. Okay. Thank yeah, so you. it's um, the bonus scoring condition is if at least one fuel unit is in the back of the truck and the fuel truck is partly over the fueling station. Can't wait for the top secret one now. Probably not that top secret, but I figured <laughs> any advantage is a good advantage. Hey, you guys are pretty good. I got a question the other day um, from a team, a top secret question that I have not heard asked at all this year. And it was a really good, solid question strategy. All right. Any other questions uh, about the game, about anything? Uh, yeah, I didn't want to.
takeaway. Oh yeah. Um, but I'm I'm Chris Weed. Um, I am thinking of starting one up in Oregon, just south of Madison area. Um, yeah, I'm just kind of getting my feet wet. Um, just reading all the docs, trying to figure <laughs> it all out. Um, I'm sorry, my cold is acting up. Um, I actually was the inspiration was I was um, in the robotics league in high school. Um, I was part of the founding team for team like 547 or something in Sussex, Wisconsin. Um, had the greatest time. Like literally I can say, you know, the reason I am where I am today is because of that team. It was super exciting. Um, but anyway, I'm just getting warmed up. I have a, a mile long questions and stuff. Um, but if I could just get like invited to the Slack. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, course. um, that you guys have going on um then I, I can spam my stuff in there um the big ones for me right now are you know kind of like getting started i have at least five kids already interested um and probably one other parent um so we have something i've been talking to the the intermediate school in town um to see if you know they have anything um to, to help us out so they're kind of going through that process. It's a little slow going, but it sounded like the, I mean, I was just trying to even get the season figured out, right? Like it sounds like the championship is coming up, which is awesome. Um, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to invite us all to go and watch it. I think that'll be some really solid, you know, inspiration to see what people do. Um, so yeah, that, that's going to be awesome. And then I'll be in touch. I just kind of wanted to see what, you know, what this kind of meeting is like. Um, oh yeah see what other coaches are here and things like that and I just I love hearing the rule clarification stuff it just <laughs> reminds me of all the all the stuff that we had to do and all the little sneaky things you do to get around and stuff so I'm excited to get this started it's it's it's, it's super cool so we have yeah. a we have a pretty good close community here um uh there are 160 members in the slack channel okay uh, we also have direct um slack channels or sub channels for referee questions for judge questions and um brian the the head judge is pretty good he gets you know he answers you know pretty regularly and, and i'm sometimes even on can answer sometimes immediately so okay it's a pretty okay. good community here yeah a lot of high scoring teams a lot of really good project uh, teams stuff like yeah. that so, yeah. introduce yourself on the uh slack channel and there's some great resources on there the coaches there yep i mean just awesome. i mean teams that have been the top two or three in the world. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. Really good. Really supportive. They're all super, um, super open to helping and even scrimmaging. And I think a lot of them do off season stuff too. So. Nice. Yeah. Okay. that will be good. Here. Yep. Exactly. I figured this is actually an accidental good timing that I have lots of time <laughs> to get this figured out. Yeah. But the season starts. It's not like a week before it's the registration or something. You know? <laughs> yeah. Th right. the season usually starts the first week of August. So you got plenty yeah. of time. And we, we actually have gone through a couple, um, when I was coaching, we did went through a couple summers and stuff as well. Okay. We did a ton of sumo bots and stuff like that. Yep. So just some fun stuff to learn how to code. So. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we did. We we got a complete um, a complete coding type of thing. We had thirty five kids at one point um, yeah, that we well. since we weren't in tournament season, you can have as many kids as you want. So once you're in tournament season and you have your team registered, you can only have ten kids per team. That's pretty yeah. hard set. Mm -hmm. um, but we had thirty two kids throughout off season all the way up until time to register. And uh, yeah, like Elijah, like how many how many play kids do you have on your team? Um, this year we have seven. So, yeah, I just didn't want it to get overwhelming at first. I'm like, try to like, I don't want to advertise too much because I've, I've already like, rumor has it, I've already got five kids. You know, like, yeah. I'm just worried that like I'm gonna get overwhelmed with number of teams and everything else. Right. So, um, trying to keep it low for yeah. now. Yeah. The <laughs> problem we had, um, we did that too. You know, as soon as we would go to a school and start recruiting, yeah. uh, you know, we had planned on doing one slash two teams, and we ended up having. You know, 30, 32, 35 kids. You know, teams can so share coaches. Interesting season. Teams can yep. share coaches. They can share resources. Okay. Um, Good enough. Thing they just can't um, cross. Uh, how do you say? I don't want to say cross compete. Like you can't have a kid change from one team to the other. Once they're committed on a team, that's it throughout. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Cool. Well, I'm good. I, I don't need to eat any more time. I know awesome. You guys have <laughs> <laughs> very very awesome thank you i'm super excited yeah we look forward to having you yeah chris look yeah, forward to, yeah working with you oh um i'll put this on before we go um we need judges um pretty uh pretty badly at this point so anybody that is available uh, please do volunteer to judge um 
And Christopher, I know you guys are coming up to, to observe. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not going to hit you up for judging because I want you to be able to walk around and get the full experience. Um, yeah. But anybody that is free um, and can come up and judge for us, I think we still need a bunch. Eight judges, probably nine, something like that. So uh, we're, we're good on referees for once. So please, please, please come help us if you can. Good word. Anything else, sir? All right. No, that was it. That was a perfect uh, bagging. Please. Right, yes, uh, we will. Do you have any idea on how many practice tables will be at this at state? Yeah, hold, uh, yeah, that's we can answer that here. So, uh, four to six. Yep, at least four. Okay, and then how many competition tables? Two, two, okay. two table sets. So just like we have done the entire season. Yep. See you next week. All right. Okay. Bye.